group one metals that uh, they can react with water right okay now they can react with cold water cold water is uh, uh the water under normal temperature like 25 degree and uh, 30 degrees celsius is still under is, is still considered cold water okay still considered cold water unless you heat it uh, like uh, go to uh, about uh, 90 or 100 degree and then there's hot water okay so uh, room temperature 25 30 degrees uh, is considered cold water okay now uh, all group one metals that they can react vigorously with water produces alkali and uh, hydrogen gas so then you can see that uh, they, they, they react very fast okay so they react vigorously and uh, at the same time you can see that there are gases produced uh, and that gas is hydrogen gas uh. if you test the gas and uh, you will find that uh, is hydrogen gas okay so group one metals react with water it will produce alkali okay now all alkali are hydroxide uh, hydroxide uh, alkali are hydroxide okay and at the same time the uh, hydrogen gas is released okay so that is the video that i showed you last week eh? now uh under these uh reactions okay there are a few observations uh first you will realize that lithium, sodium, and potassium, they floods and move around on the surface of the water, right? Okay, and then they dissolve in the water. Now, so for uh, lithium and potassium, sodium and potassium, okay, you will find that they flood on the surface. If they floods on the surface, it means that their density is higher or lower than water. Lower, okay? Their densities are lower than water and therefore they are they, they flood eh? okay but for uh rubidium and uh uh cesium okay rubidium cesium and francium uh, their, their density is higher than water eh? but lithium sodium and hydrogen their density is lower okay after react uh, you will find that they dissolve in water okay which means that after react uh, the new compound form will dissolve in water eh? okay uh, the new compound form actually is hydroxide and the hydroxide will dissolve in water to form alkali okay so that's the observations and now uh, from these observations then we can conclude that uh, lithium sodium and potassium are less dense than water as we discussed just now okay they form hydroxide and the hydroxide will uh, dissolve in uh, water okay colorless gas is released around the metals and uh, if you collect the gas uh, Okay, so then test the gas with a lighted wooden splinter. So the gas will produce a pop sound when ignited with lighted wooden splinter. The so group one metal just can react with water. No, they can react with a lot of other things. Okay, uh, water is just one of it. Okay, and in our syllabus, we will only discuss water, oxygen, and chlorine. These three that you need to know in our syllabus. Okay, it, it, it can react with uh, a lot of other things. Eh? Okay, but we will only discuss water, oxygen, and chlorine. Okay, so you see, it, it released hydrogen gas. Eh? Okay, and to test the gas, we use lighted wooden splinter, and uh, this lighted wooden splinter will produce a pop sound. Okay, when it is uh, brought close to the mouth of the uh, test tube. Okay, uh, not burning, not burning. Okay, not burning. So if you test with lighted wooden splinter, not burning. Okay, uh, it will just produce a pop sound. So uh, conclusions, eh? okay. So the colorless gas, colorless flam flammable gas is a uh, hydrogen gas. Eh? So it produces hydrogen gas. Okay. Another things is uh, the solution turn blue eh, when it's tested with universal indicator. Now universal indicator is uh, is an indicators to uh, to test the pH of a solutions. Okay, is to test the pH of a solutions. And um, this universal indicator, it shows different colors at the different pH. Okay, different colors at different pH. So from the color, then we can tell, roughly tell, okay, the pH. It's not very accurate, but you can roughly tell the pH of the solutions. So what's the colors of the universal indicator at different pH? Okay, now, now let me show you, because we, we are going to discuss this uh, in uh, acids and base, uh, acids and bases, but for the time being, I will let you know uh, what's the colors of this uh, universal indicators at uh, different pH. Uh? Okay, now the colors of the universal indicators 
is uh, exactly the same as the colors of the rainbow. The colors of the rainbow, okay? So I believe you have memorized the colors of the rainbow, right? So can any of you tell me what's the first colors of the rainbow? Red, okay, let's start with red, okay, red. Orange, yes, okay. Yellow, okay. Green, okay, green. Blue, and then uh, indigo, and uh, purple, right? Purples or violet, right? Okay, that's right, okay. Now, uh, for this universal indicators, this is the colors of the rainbow and it's also the colors of the universal indicators. Okay, this is colors of the rainbow, but it's also the colors of the universal indicators at different pH. Okay, now, at, when the universal indicator is green in color, then the pH is 7, which means neutral, eh? neutral. Okay, and uh, when it's about, and when it's red in color, is a uh, pH one, okay, and uh, when it's purple, is a uh, pH uh, fourteen, okay. So when it's blue, is about pH nine, uh, pH nines, and uh, this one is about pH eleven or twelve, eh? okay. And uh, yellow is about pH five, and uh, this one is about pH three, okay. pH three orange. Eh? Ah, so that is the colors of the universal indicator. It's, it's very easy to memorize, right? Because it's uh, just like the colors of the rainbow from red to purple. Is the, this indicator to, to test uh, acids and alkali? Yes. Uh, not only it tests acid and alkali, it can also tell the pH. Okay, it can also tell the pH. Uh, pH 7 is uh, neutral, less than 7 is acid, uh, more than 7 is alkali. Eh? Okay, this is acid. And uh, this is alkali. Uh, the solution turn blue. Turn blue means it's around here, pH 9, pH 10. Okay. Uh, so this shows that when uh, group 1 elements react with water, it produces alkali. Yeah? It produces alkali. So uh, let's erase this. So the conclusion is the solution produced is an alkali. Okay, the second one is sodium. Eh? Okay, sodium and the uh, ob observations. Eh? So this sodium moves swiftly. S swiftly means very fast. Eh? Just now the lithium it moves slowly. This one moves faster. Okay, it moves faster on the surface uh, with fizzing sound. Okay, this one is because the gas is released, and the equation is uh, about the same. Eh? About the same. Sodium react with uh, water H two O, and produces sodium hydroxide. Yeah, this is the alkali. Is the alkali at the same time uh, hydrogen gas is released? Eh? Okay, and then to balance the equation, we put a we put a two here, two, and a two here. Okay, so that's for sodium, and uh, potassium is also more or less the same, and uh, except this uh, it moves very fast, react violently with water. Yeah, means uh, react very fast and move very fast. Uh, and then so it will burn, okay? It burned with uh, a purple, actually it burned with a purple flame, okay? Now why it burn is because uh, hydrogen gas is a flammable gas, okay? During these reactions, a lot of heat is released. So this heat can ignite the hydrogen gas uh, and make it burn with uh, some f flame, okay? It will burn. Uh, for sodium, sometimes you can see the flame, okay? but usually you, you don't see it, yeah? sometimes. Uh, but uh, for potassium, uh, yes, usually you can see the flame. So it will react very fast and uh, sometimes it burns, uh, okay? it burns. And uh, the equations, equation is uh, also the same, okay? potassium with water, okay? and then uh, produce alkali, potassium hydroxide, and hydrogen gas. Okay, and uh, to balance it, put a two, two, two here. So what's the balance equation for uh, sodium? Uh, it's the same as lithium. Okay, two, two, two here. Okay, same as lithium, and it's also same as this potassium. Uh, two, two, two here. Okay, hydrogen is just one, okay? The others are uh, two, two, two. Okay, so that is the uh, equation for the reactions.